This is Witchbase News for Friday the 5th of February 2021 ...I'm Commander Burr. In this weeks news ...Frontier answers more Odyssey questions ...a new CG marks a possible change in policy at Frontier ...and the itchy subject of the enslavement of new players in the game. If you enjoy this video remember to hit like and subscribe and if you'd like to help support the work of this channel you'll also find us on Patreon. Links to everything you need are in the description below. Frontier released another of their regular Odyssey Answers forum posts today ...this time dealing with the subject of first footfall on planets in the upcoming legs focused expansion. Whilst again relatively light on any significant details the questions do cover off a couple of salient points. Most notably for us were the fact that not all landable planets will be explorable on foot ...there is still the element of survivability to deal with with the extremes of gravity and temperature for example ...in some cases making that impossible. With that said Frontier have clarified that the number of landable planets will be going up by 20% and when you're dealing with a game that has planets numbering at the very least in the billions 20% is quite a lot. For the full read on all the questions answered check the link in the description below. Elsewhere Frontier confirmed this week that first footfall will not be dependent on selling data as is the case with new discoveries currently. Actually putting your feet on the surface of a new world will be enough and it will be instantaneous. They have also said that you'll be able to transition from your SRV to on foot gameplay but when questioned how that transition will work they said only that the transition will be quote as it is now. But obviously we can't get out of our SRVs currently so we're assuming they mean fade to black as with SRV and SLF transitions. A question was asked about how death of your player character will work and if you'll respawn somewhere and how and if that respawning will be handled in lore. Frontier have said that they are still reviewing a number of factors involved in any processes around on foot death and are looking into what solutions work best. On the subject of the distress call mystery that was dropped into the game last week and whether it was an ongoing multi part event all they have said is that it is there for a reason. As and when we get any new answers from Frontier on anything current or Odyssey related we'll let you know so make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the little bell icon so you don't miss anything. A new community goal launched this week that whilst offering again a previously unique reward in the game it also marks a possible change in policy for such rewards from Frontier. Not only will the fully engineered lightweight high capacity and thermal cascade missile rack be gifted as a reward for supplying mined commodities at the end of the CG ...the event itself will see the unlocking of the module at human technology brokers going forward. The uniquely engineered missile rack from Liz Ryder had only previously been released as a one and done reward and it seems now that Frontier have had a change of heart in that regard. After all if you were new to the game under the old system this equipment would forever be locked to you giving longer term players an extremely unfair advantage. The CG runs until Thursday next week and details of the community goal are linked below. Far and away the hot topic within the community this week has been that of emergent gameplay and where the line between that gameplay and toxic behaviour sits. There's a really solid read about what's gone on over on the website Polygon and if you're looking for more details I'd urge you to take a look at that but for the uninitiated let me fill in some blanks for you. It seems there's been an organised effort on the Xbox side of the game amongst a small group of experienced players to hoodwink new players into accepting an offer of assistance to gain lucrative rewards from mining. What the offering party fails to disclose however is that once landed on the apparently friendly players fleet carrier they will be transported to a system 800 light years away from populated space with not enough range in their ship to get anywhere without assistance and the only place they can sell their mined resources is the offending carrier vessel which is paying rock bottom prices. With not enough knowledge and experience in the cutthroat galaxy of elite to get themselves out of the situation the victims gameplay is restricted purely to one of mining for the carrier owner. It is, to all intents and purposes, in game slavery. 
Precisely how many players have been scammed like this is unknown but Polygon is reporting as many as 15 possibly more. The story however doesn't end there. In fact this is where it gets really interesting. Emergent gameplay you see is a two sided coin. Whilst there will always be scummy and toxic emergent behaviour from a small minority of players Elite has shown itself time and time again to be a game and a community of generous and altogether more altruistic types. You see one of the indentured players reached out to the Fuel Rats an entirely emergent and player driven organisation of individuals within the galaxy of Elite who spend their time rescuing those that have run out of fuel and asked if they had the infrastructure to assist in any way. The fuel rats in turn reached out to the Hull Seals, an equally emergent and altruistic player run organisation that primarily concerns itself with repairing the hull of those stuck out in the black. But while specialising in hull repairs they also have a habit of performing some more unusual rescues. Likewise the new player initiative an equally emergent player group that dedicates itself to guiding new players to the galaxy of Elite Dangerous also got wind of the scam. The end result of all this is that the system where the new players were being held hostage has now been populated with multiple fleet carriers and player groups offering an escape route to the enslaved. Frontier developments are aware of the situation and are monitoring but ultimately until their terms of service are broken they won't and I believe shouldn't intervene. Ultimately Elite Dangerous is an emergent role playing experience. Some players choose to play traders, mercenary and bounty hunters, some players choose to play as pirates or explorers and some players choose to play differently. Ultimately the takeaway lesson from this is that you don't land on a carrier that you don't absolutely trust but of course a lot of new players are not going to appreciate the risks when they're still a little green behind the ears. Educating new people to a game like Elite is always going to be a tough one and Frontier made mention of publishing a Galnet article obviously in universe to help warn players of the threat but of course getting them to read Galnet is again a lesson in itself. The important thing and the heartening thing to see is that there are still far more hull seals and fuel rats etc than there are slavers and if Elite is art imitating life then take some small comfort from that. Where do you stand on the subject of emergent gameplay and toxic emergent gameplay? Should the galaxy be allowed to completely run its own course or are you even planning to jump into the rescue effort yourself? Let us know in the comments below. Links to the organisations involved in the rescue of the individuals affected can also be found in the description below this video. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.